Welcome to another 90 Day Fiancé recap. Let's talk about Season 10, Episode 6. And I'm reporting live from my parents' house, which is why I have to keep my voice down. So if you're like, oh my god, why is she talking so quiet? Why is she whispering? That's why. Okay. Let's talk about Jasmine and Gino. So Jasmine's about to meet Gino's family in real life for the very first time, and she's not really looking forward to it, but she's going to try her best to, you know, slap a smile on her face and act pleasant. But let's get one thing straight. She is not going to take any bullshit from anybody. So they're both in the car on their way to the restaurant, and she says she feels like a cow going to a butchery. <laughs> I feel like a cow going to the butchery. <laughs> now they get to the restaurant, the whole entire family's there, and they're super nice to her. They're like, oh my god, Jasmine, welcome to America. Woo! I did notice her efforts to look modest. Actually, I think that dress originally had a deep V neckline, but she like stitched it up. <laughs> We meet Gino's brother and it, he kind of does look like him, but oh my God, they have the same exact voice and the way they speak. Um, so his brother has his own ITM or interview scene and he just roasts the hell out of him. He's like, my brother's kind of ugly. He's got no money. And so I just want to make sure Jasmine really loves him for him. Like, I don't understand why a woman would want to be with him. So we got to make sure she's the real deal. Gino's not the best looking guy. He doesn't have the most money. We're just trying to figure out what's her real intent. And then the wife is like, yeah, I saw pictures of her on her social media and they're very promiscuous. And it makes me think, what if she's looking for some other sugar daddies? Y'all, right away, I was like, okay, maybe Jasmine wasn't exaggerating when she was talking about Gino's family. Because I'm not going to lie, I really did think she was exaggerating, you know, just throwing another fit. But I'm starting to already get a pretty bad vibe. However, she does have a nice little moment with Dana's wife. Remember Dana, the cousin who was like talking shit about her and commenting on her Instagram? I mean, let's just be real. I'm sure half of these men are secretly subscribed to her own. Oh, no, I can't say the word on YouTube. O.F if you know what I mean. So Gino joins the guys and he catches up and they're like, hey, Gino, how's everything so far? And Gino, 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 are you freaking dumb? He spills beans. He tells them about how Jasmine spent the $4,000 that he gave her for her wedding dress on cosmetic surgery. Why the hell would you tell your family that? Unless you want them to hate her. And then his cousin Dana goes, Oh my God, you know, I mean, I don't want to say you got to get her in line, but you got to get her in line, bro. Like she can't be doing that. The biggest worry we have is that she's just coming here to use Gino. It gave us more red flags to kind of think about. Like, she's not grateful for the money she was given. She's just going to spend it on something else and hope that she gets more. So the whole family gathers at the dining table with Gino and Jasmine, and the grilling officially begins. This boy, okay, who's never met Jasmine before, has the audacity to say, are you grateful for everything that Gino has given you? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, what? W w what'd you just say, bitch? I would have immediately been triggered. I would have been like, what the f But Jasmine played it cool. She was like, yes, of course. Yeah, but you know what? I've sacrificed a lot too, so I feel like Gino should also be grateful. And I'll give Gino this. He did back her up. He was just like, yeah, you know, Jasmine left her kids and her house and everything and came to uh, Michigan to be with me. <laughs> she left Panama. Okay, so yeah. And then Gino's busted ass brother says, well, Jasmine, how will you contribute and be a productive American? B bitch, what? I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know I was at an immigration interview. Are, are you the president of the United States? Are you the CEO of immigration? Are you like the guard of America? Like, why are you asking me this question? Who are you? Like, literally, who are you? Okay, shut your mouth, you busted, fugly ass bitch. They are attacking me. 
Right now, this is a personal attack. It doesn't matter what I do, I will never be good enough for Gina's family. I'm not American. And they already put a label on me because of it. Then they talk about the prenup. Oh, lovely. His family's like, yeah, Gino needs to protect everything that he's worked so hard for. Like, I signed one and she, her dad made me sign one and da 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 da. You know what? I call bullshit. Okay, show me the proof. You guys, I felt so bad for her. Sorry, I'm moving around because I'm laying down on my bed and this pillow is so damn uncomfortable. Okay, side note, I spent some money on these pillows. I was like, I really want to uh, spoil myself and get nice pillows because I sleep like ass and uh, I just always have like neck issues and I want to spend some money and spoil myself and get nice pillows. So I went to Brooklinen. Brooklinen sponsors a lot of my um, favorite creators. So I used someone's code and got some pillows and some bed sheets and um, a duvet cover. Let me just say, the duvet cover, the sheets, oh, just amazing material. They're so comfortable. I love sleeping on them. But do not get the pillows because the pillows are flat and I've had them for like six months and they're just like super deflated. And no matter how many times I try to puff them, they just like, oh, you guys can't see it. You know what? They're just, they're dead. And I wish I never bought these pillows. Okay. Oh my God. I'm just so uncomfortable right now. So I felt really bad for her because she was not exaggerating. They really hate her. They think the worst of her. They're not even giving her a chance. They have like super racist undertones. Micro macro aggressions to hell and back. Jasmine, she handled herself so well. I'm very proud of her. And um, they finally say goodbye. They leave the restaurant. Now Gino drives them back home and it's raining outside and she whoop, drops her phone. So she's like looking for it. And then all of a sudden she finds something and she's like, ah, what is this? And it's a lip gloss and it's not hers. And immediately Gino has the worst response. He acts so effing guilty and he's just like, hmm, I don't know what that is. I don't know. I've never seen that in my life. I don't know how I got there. Hmm, very curious. Uh, I don't know. No idea. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm like, Gino, shut up. Just say you don't know. You don't have to. <laughs> oh my God. You can just see his facial expression and he's like in panic mode and he, it just reads guilty. And Jasmine notices this too. So she's like, what is this? And he's like, uh, yeah, probably my coworker when she was in my car. You go out on dates with coworkers. And she's basically flipping out. You cheated. And he's like, no, I didn't. Things start cheating. And she's like, I'm not looking for anything. Yes, my cell are. phone just fell down and I see the <laughs> lips and Phone. Jasmine is literally sobbing right now. <laughs> I want to go. Just sickening. I just want to go home. I want to go back to Panama. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to call you an Uber. Yeah, go back to Panama. And she gets out of the car and she's like, I don't want to be with you anymore. I don't want to be with you anymore. And she starts running to God knows where. She has nowhere to go. She has no car. She has nothing. And th that's basically where the scene ends. So I don't know how they're going to make up. Gino's going to have to go and apologize. <laughs> Now we get Annalie and Clayton. So Annalie is on her way to Kentucky from Peru and Clayton is tidying up his apartment. Closet mom comes out of her room and she was like, I was working on my Spanish. And he's like, what have you learned, mom? And she goes, como esta? Okay. Well, remember, mom, speak in your normal tone. Just because she doesn't understand English doesn't mean you should talk to her like she's a stupid effing idiot. Okay. And she's like, Clayton, I know, I know that. Honestly, kudos to Clayton for that because um, when I see people adjust their speech when they hear my parents' accent, it kills me. It kills me. I'm like, they speak English. Okay, they just have an accent, like they understand, like, oh, what are you talking so slow for? Like, damn. Now, Clayton's worried that his mom's going to get super frustrated and impatient and cranky with the language barrier. So he's a little nervous about that. 
Now, this is Clayton's first time buying flowers for anybody because he feels like flowers just die anyway. So like, like, what is the point of buying flowers? It's kind of a useless, pointless gift. But he feels like Annalie deserves flowers. So he got a big bouquet and greeted her at the airport. So she comes down the escalator and they hug, they cry. But I felt like he was way more excited to see her. I don't know, maybe she's not super outwardly expressive. Who the hell knows? We just have to wait and see. Now he gifted her a t-shirt with a picture of them on it, an alpaca stuffed animal, and then a cup that has a picture of his guinea pigs. And in Spanish, it says, do not eat. (laughs) Y'all, that was funny. I feel like they have pretty good banter because she was like, you know what? If you piss me off, I'm going to eat one of your piggies. And then he quickly came back with, well, that means you got to learn how to cook first. And I thought it was funny. I know that's an, a very incredibly messed up joke, but I appreciate some dark humor. Si tú me haces enojar o algo pasa, tienes que cuidar a tus cuyes porque puedo tomar uno y comerlo. <laughs> Yeah, pero primero necesitas aprender cómo cocinar. (laughs) (laughs) They finally enter his apartment, and she gets a tour of the house. And she's very overwhelmed. There's things everywhere. She's a very neat person, and this house has a lot of clutter everywhere. She also doesn't understand why there's no couch. Like, where are the people, humans, supposed to sit? They get to his bedroom, and she puts the suitcase on his bed. Uh, y'all know how I feel about all that. Um, so I did cringe. And then she goes to the bathroom with her um, pajamas and he's ready for some spicy time. So as she's in the bathroom, he whips off his pants <laughs> and he hops into the bed with a Rubik's Cube. Me and Annalie are not going to have an intimate relationship too often with my mom 10 feet away. In this situation, she might shut her door, turn the radio on. We can turn some sound on and just... You know. She came out of the bathroom. I did notice that she didn't shower after the long airplane ride, but whatever. And she hops into bed and she uses his panda, what was it a panda? Or it was some kind of stuffed animal to separate them. And she turned around and went to bed. <laughs> wah, wah. He was super disappointed that he didn't even get a cuddle. Next is Ashley and Manuel. Now, their scene started with like a very calming classical song, which in my mind pretty much meant that things were going to go to shit. Everything seems fine. She's putting on her jewelry, getting ready. Meanwhile, Manuel's chilling with Rico Suave. Then a producer says, uh, wait, uh, you guys were screaming at each other an hour ago and we left to uh, drop some lip gloss in Gino's car and then we came back and you guys are all fine. And then Ashley goes, oh, well, that's because we had schmecks, so we're good now. Yeah, I guess that's all they need to do after an argument. They just need a smash. So after she's done getting ready, they go to meet her friends. They question him. He's kind of defensive and he's not really giving the best answers. And it's just like not the best meeting. Then they go to therapy. He's been there for like a week and they already need therapy. (laughs) So that's pretty much what happened with them. Let's move on to Nikki and Justin Igor. Their intro will never not make me laugh. Like, what the fork is that? It seems like Nikki and Justin Igor finally banged. But that's literally all he did because she's not satisfied. She wants more, like a lot more. Justin, I wanted to write it again and again and again. But you were like, babe, I'm too tired. She also clarified that she did all the giving and he did all the taking. Schmex is very important to Nikki. Very, very important. And Justin Igor basically said that Schmex is not very important to him. And she's like, really? Really, Justin? Really? And he goes, really? Really? Really, Justin? Really? Later, Nikki goes out to meet Justin Igor's friends. And I gotta say, they were pretty nice especially that really pretty woman she was like super nice and super empathetic and as soon as they sit down like before they even get their menus nikki has a diarrhea of the mouth she tells them about how she was shunned by her parents when she came out as trans 
she was homeless. She had to live out on the streets. She was addicted to drugs. She had to exchange her body for some food and some place to sleep. And that lady friend, she was super understanding. And Nikki pulls that girl and she she goes, let's go to the bar. You know, I want to have like a little girl chat. So they go to the bar and Nikki confides in her about their schmeck's life. And then she goes, you know, Justin Igor used to eat my roast beef sandwich all the time before he found out that I was trans, but now after, he doesn't go near there. First of all, he used to go down there all the time and he didn't know that she was trans. I want to know how good is the surgery? Like, I'm curious to see because I've never seen one. And I didn't even know that they did that surgery, like men and women, until uh, Gabe was on the other season. So him being on and like sharing all his stories was super informative and educational, in my opinion. So like, I am curious to know what it looks like, but I don't want to Google it. (laughs) Anyway, back where the guys are. His friend asks Justin Igor about his Schmeck's life. And he was like, does she have a sausage? And Justin Igor is like, no, she's like a complete woman. Can't tell the difference, you know? And then the friend asks him if um, she acts like a man. (laughs) Like, is she dominating or controlling? You know, because women are supposed to be submissive. What the hell? And Justin Igor is like, you know what? She does kind of remind me of a man sometimes because she is controlling. And I'm like, what the? (laughs) So many issues with that, okay? Now, it's hard to forget about she's trans because sometimes she acting like man part. I don't know. Let's see what Devin and Nick are up to. So Devin finally meets Nick's parents. And they are super duper nice, especially his mom. Like, it, I honestly feel like that meeting couldn't have gone better. They get in the car and the dad's like, oh, you're skinny. <laughs> okay, um, thanks. I don't know. That was a weird comment to make. I don't know if he was shocked because Nick kept calling her piggy. So he expected her to be chunky or something. I don't know why, where that comment came from, but... You know, just like don't make comments on people's bodies, okay? Just don't. So they go to the restaurant. They meet Nick's sister and her kids. And at one point, his mom hands over a napkin to him. And she was like, hey, give this to Devin because she has lipstick in her teeth. And so he hands it over or as he's handing it over and he tells her like, oh, you have lipstick on your teeth. Devin just opens her mouth and like doesn't take the napkin. So he ends up wiping off the lipstick on her teeth and the parents and his sister are just like looking like oh interesting uh you got the uh, lipstick on your teeth the front teeth you want to thank you <laughs> his sister asks if she knows any korean and he looks over to Devin and he goes hey say what i taught you like in korean like they want to hear And she just gets so flustered and so shy. And I feel like she got hella anxious. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. You don't want to try? And his mom talks about how much she's going to miss him when he leaves and gets married to her and moves to America. And Devin starts to cry. And the whole family's like, why is she crying? Like, what did I say? And uh, basically Nick said, oh, she's just, she feels really bad that she feels like it's all her fault that, you know, we're separating and da 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 And they're like, don't worry, like, it's, everything's fine. You know, I'm just going to miss my son. Everything went so well. The mom couldn't be nicer and sweeter. Honestly, I kind of felt bad for her because I, I just don't think she wanted to cry, but it's just how, like, her body reacts. Because I'm kind of like that too. When I get super flustered or, like, very mad or very sad. I just cry. Crying is just an automatic response that my body does when I have a ton of emotions at once that I can't really like control. But yeah, overall, I feel like their meeting went so well. The parents were so nice. I don't know why Nick was all like making her nervous and paranoid about, oh, my parents, you know, they're super strict and they might not accept you. And if they don't accept you, then I can't marry you. You know, you have to get their approval. They were so sweet. Okay, moving on to Sophie and Rob, the knob. Not much of an update. Their segment was like five minutes short, but um, 
I would like to thank Molly, not Molly, what's her mom's name? I don't know, Molly Lookalike. I would like to thank Sophie's mom for being um, so funny. She was like, oh my God, Rob really is a knob. He has no life. He has no future. He has no emotion, no empathy. He's a loser. Yeah, facts. She hit the nail on the head. But Sophie, it seems like she's about to go back to him because her mom was like, break up with him. Come home right now. Come to London stat and Sophie was a little bit more hesitant she was like I just can't turn my feelings off mom and um yeah despite those disgusting videos that she found of other women and himself she needs a little bit more time to think about it so I don't know it kind of seems like they're gonna make up and uh, whatever the best scenario is we can move past this and I can be with Rob and we can be this great couple that we've been trying so hard to be. Well, that's pretty much it for today's recap. I couldn't super get into it like I normally do because I'm at my parents and I just don't want them to hear me. You know, it is kind of embarrassing if you <laughs> if you think about it. I'm talking about Gino and Jasmine and I'm making all these voices and they're probably like, what the hell is our daughter doing in there? You know, I like to keep it low and discreet. <laughs> so just a little disclaimer, my uploads for the next two weeks might be inconsistent because I have a lot going on. I also have a um, another reality show recap that I'm working on. Uh, here's the thing with ADHD. I have so many ideas. So I start so many things. You should see my Word documents. I have 25 that I started and did not finish. So that's the story of my life. But hopefully I'm going to focus on these two. This one case that I found very interesting. And then another reality TV show that turned into a case. And then I have Love After Lockup here. <sighs> I don't know. I'm just one potato just trying to do what I can. <laughs> but I love it. I love doing this. So don't worry, you guys. You guys don't have to be like, oh my God, Poe, please take a break. Like, no, I'll take a break when I die. Okay. All right, guys, I am going to go. So have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you guys in my next recap. Bye.